Angles, angles, angles. God angles. What do we need to know about CA angle questions? Just think within these two types. If you're thinking about anything else, anything else you learn in your school, you're just wasting your time. You're, you're literally screwing yourself over. Although they are not always on the SAT, they are literally the simplest and the easiest question to get right and start raising your score. Whenever you see an angle question, you should be like, yes, I got another question right. But to get them right, make sure you know these two types and only think within these two things. So if you're ready to get started, smash the like button and stick till the end. So as always guys, we're gonna break this video down into four simple steps. Step number one, we're gonna go over exactly what these questions look like. And second, we're gonna break down what are the two different types of angle questions. And third, what do we have to know for each of these two types of angle questions? And fourth and the last, we're gonna go over exactly how to solve these questions super quickly and as accurately as possible and start getting them all right. So how can we recognize that we're dealing with an angle question? Well, it's actually really simple. Look at the question and if you see angles anywhere, there's a very high chance that we're dealing with an angle question. Obviously, triangles and circles also use angles in their questions, but whenever you see an angle question, run these two types and see if they are one of those super easy questions. And you might be asking, what are those two types? It's actually really simple. They are either going to be about parallel lines or they're going to be about total angle formula. If they are not one of these two, move on to something else. They're not angle questions. So we're gonna start off by parallel lines. I'm gonna teach you how exactly you can identify parallel line questions. Obviously, parallel line is talking about two lines that are going to be parallel. Whenever you see two lines that are parallel, there is 200% chance that it's going to be a parallel, parallel line question. One thing to keep in mind is that question will always, always tell you that we are dealing with two parallel lines. If the drawing kind of looks like they're parallel lines, but the question doesn't tell you that they are parallel, then do not use these techniques. It's not going to be about parallel lines. It's going to be about something else. There's so many things messed up with people making the SAT. And one of the things is they literally put these parallel lines just to trick you into thinking about parallel lines when in reality, you shouldn't be using parallel lines. Don't fall for the trick. And within the parallel line questions, they are only testing you on one simple thing. And that is which angle is the same as the other angle, okay? So we know that this angle is the same as this angle and this angle is also same as this angle. So understanding whether this one is same as this one or this one or that one, understanding which ones are equal to each other, that's going to be the main key. And to understand which angles are equal to each other, there are two things you need to know. First one is going to be a vertical angle. So vertical angles are talking about, let's say we have this angle right here, the angle that's across from this angle right here, that's going to be called a vertical angle. And we know that vertical angles are always the same. Okay, so this angle and this angle, they are going to be the same. So that's what vertical angle is. The second thing you need to know are going to be corresponding angles. So what are corresponding angles? Let's say we have this angle right here. Okay, and this angle is corresponding to this one right here. That is because they are literally on the same corner in terms of this line. Does that make sense? So these two angles are considered corresponding angles and this angle is considered corresponding to this one right here because they are literally on the same corner of the same line so those are going to be the two different types of angles you need to know within parallel lines if you know that you are going to be set and how do these questions actually show up on the sat let's go to the next one so this is one of the parallel line questions that actually showed up on the sat so let's give it a shot so the when you look at the question the first thing you see is there is going to be a set of parallel lines and if you look at the question, it says in the figure above lines L and M are parallel. You see how they told you they are parallel. Do not assume that lines are parallel. It's always gonna tell you that they are parallel. And Y is equal to 20 and Z is equal to 60. What's the value of X, right? So we're looking for value of X, which is right there. So Y is equal to 20 and Z is equal to 60. So how can we find that? Well, whenever you're dealing with parallel line questions, I like to kind of extend them out and makes it a lot easier to look at. So when we see this question, we are looking for X. What is the value of X? Well, in order for us to find out the value of X, we know there's a triangle right here. And we know triangle adds up to 180 degrees. And this 180 is currently made up of X plus 60 plus this unknown angle right there. So we're gonna put a question mark there. As long as we can figure out what this unknown angle is, then we're only left with X and we can isolate and find out what X is equal to. But how do we find it? Well, remember what I told you about parallel lines? It's always testing your knowledge on which angle is the same as which one. So if you look at this 20 right here, we know this angle is corresponding to this angle right here, which means this angle is going to be 20, 
which means our unknown is going to be 20. So we can rewrite it as 180 is equal to x plus 60 plus 20, which is going to be x plus 80 is equal to 180, subtract 80, subtract 80, it becomes x is equal to 100. So answer is going to be B. So guys, angle questions, as I mentioned, they are really, really, really easy, as long as you know to what to think about within these angle questions. So the first type was think about parallel lines. You want to know two things, that is corresponding angles and vertical angles. If you know those, you're going to be set. Let's go to the next one. So the second type you need to know is going to be based on total angle formula. And what does total angle formula useful for? Well, it does exactly what the name suggests. It tells you what the total angle is based on the number of sides. So for example, let's say we have a hexagon, right? Uh, it's a great looking hexagon. And hexagon has one, two, three, four, five, six. It has six sides, right? But what's the total angle within the hexagon? Well, here's how you calculate it. Total angle is calculated by 180 times n minus two, and n represents the number of sides, okay? So for a hexagon, there are six sides, right? Which means we can plug in six into n right there, which means it's going to be 180 times six minus two, which is 180 times four, and that's going to be 720, okay? So we know that total angle within the hexagon is going to be 720. For a pentagon, you just plug in five here because pentagon has five sides and that's just how you use the total angle formula and how is this going to be useful sometimes the sat is going to give you these weird looking shapes and you're going to need to know exactly what the total angle is within this given shape for instance if it looks like something like this let's play that's one side what's the, uh let's say we need to know the total angle here then just calculate how many sides there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So total angle is going to be 180 times eight minus two, which is going to be 1080. Although this is not going to be on the actual SAT, there will be a situation where you need to find out exactly what the total angle is based on the shape you're given. So let's see how this kind of question will show up in the SAT. If you look at this, it says in the figure about what's the value of X, right? And X is right here, here, here. And we know that if they're using all the same variables, that means they are all going to be equal to each other because if X is, let's say like 20 here, then it has to be 20 here and 20 here because they are all, they are all using the same variables. But it's not 20 because 20 is not even one of the answer choices. Anyways, the question is asking us to find out the value of X, right? Well, let's look at this shape right here. 45 plus X plus X plus X. So that's going to be the total angle, right? So 45 plus X plus X plus X, which is 45 plus three X. And that's going to give you the total angle for that shape, because that's literally what all the angles are for that shape right there. And if we can find out exactly what the total angle is, then we can isolate X and find out the answer to our question. But the problem is how can we find out what the total angle is for this shape right here? That's when you use the total angle formula, which is going to be total angle, is equal to 180 parentheses n minus 2 and 180 how many sides do we have we have 1 2 3 4 so 4 minus 2 which is going to be 180 times 2 which is going to be 360 so we know that our total angle is 3 uh, 360 which means we can plug it in right there so we're just gonna write this down right here 45 plus 3x is equal to total angle which is 360 and we just subtract 45 minus 45 and 3x is equal to 315, x is equal to 105. And our answer is going to be choice D right here. So for some people, they might look at this question and say, oh, it has four sides, which means the total angle is going to be 360. So in that case, we probably wouldn't need this. I mean, if you didn't recognize it, then you can use this method right there. But if they're giving you like six sides, seven sides, eight nines, or nine sides, you are gonna need to know how to use total angle formula. I actually had one of my students who are getting offline tutored um, she was supposed to remember this equation, but she had like a little brain fart when she was taking the SAT. She thought it was 180 like n minus one. And she calculated using this and then she got the question wrong because she didn't know what the total angle was for that given specific shape. It wasn't like four sides or three sides. It was like six, seven or eight sides. It was really complicated. So make sure you really know this total angle formula because it's, it's gonna be one of those questions you either you know it or you don't. And just by knowing this formula, you're going to be able to get the question right. So angles is one of those like really simple topics. It's like freebies. When you see a question on the SAT about angles, it should be like, yes, I got another question right. But make sure you know those two types because SAT is only tested based on those two types. And what are the two types? 
First is parallel lines and second is total angle formula. And if you're thinking anything outside of these two types, you're literally killing your score. So make sure you know these two types, master them, get them in your head, and you're going to be set whenever you see an angle question on the actual SAT. And as always guys, if you guys wanna learn more and do some more additional practice for angles, there's going to be a link in the description box down below where it takes you to a private lecture. Anyways guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns, or if there's anything you wanna see next, leave it in the comment box below because it's not my channel, it's our channel. And lastly, Congratulations, you stick till the end. You know what? I'll give you a high five. You might think that's not that big of an accomplishment, but in this day and age where our generation has a really low attention span and it's all about getting things like quick, quick, quick due to our smartphones and like Amazon's two-day shipping, it's, it's, a, it's actually a really big accomplishment. Okay, seriously, I'm gonna stop the video here. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. For the stores, but frown when I'm not down to earth. Try to drag me like gravity, but I can never be down.